Hello everyone, and welcome back to another installment of Tales from the Pit. I'm your intrepid spelunksman, Michael Swaim. Uh, I'm a I elevator operator, I guess I would say, taking you down, usually, to the depths for a grim dark discussion of all things trauma, grief, shame, and addiction. But you know, there's another thing we always say when we talk about this podcast, and it's healing. And I realize we've had precious few episodes about, I try to include it somewhat in the conversation each time, but we haven't had a lot of episodes focused entirely on like, okay, well, what's it feel like when you're good? Or like, how do you get good? And I'm excited to bring you an episode like that today. The only other one that comes to mind is uh, the one with Soren Bowie called Stable Genius, where he explained what it's like to be someone who never has any mental problems. <laughs> Fascinating episode, as I'm sure this one will be, so let's get right to it. Um, please welcome one of my dearest friends, longtime collaborator, multiple Emmy winner, uh, and all around just good guy, Daniel O'Brien. Welcome Hello. to the pit. Hello, thank you so much for having me back. Is uh was Michael and Daniel are fighting uh Pit Cannon, or is that uh its own thing? No, that I mean, you're a, you know, you're a big swinging dick, so <laughs> that was like a special one-off Okay, Michael Daniel Marquis event. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to decide if I'm saying thanks for having me back or thanks for having me for the first time. Oh, this will be your first appearance on The Pit. Oh, boy, yeah. thanks for having me for the first time in The Pit. Yeah, welcome to The Pit. Um, yeah, you're, I haven't... I don't know you to be like a real moody guy. Not that I've seen you capable of sadness and and joy and all the human emotions, but um, but neuroses I think are more. Is that fair to say? More your forte? Yeah, yeah. Neuroses. I've I've always been uh like a, a very anxious person. Uh, and yeah. I've 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 never wanted to be. And uh, I, I, that's I, part of it. I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it gets you. No one is ever like super chill and be like, I really fucking wish I was just nervous all the time. I really wish I just like constantly felt like I was late for something, but I just don't have it in me. No, there's no, there's no <laughs> reverse of that where people aspire to anxiety. Yeah. Um, so I guess my, I guess my thought was just going in a random direction, which yeah. is. We could do a whole episode about that, but we're not. So I'm going to get us back on track um, and talk about a way that I think a lot of us who have had any kind of mental challenge or emotional challenge have tried to address that. Very popular from a long time back. It's called meditation and sort of, I, I'm not using it uh, with any kind of religious connotation, but you know, the more modern like mindfulness and uh, being present and the idea that this is good for you. And uh, so, Daniel, just to kick things off, how did you come to meditation at all? Uh, and had you thought about doing it for a long time and then finally got into it or suddenly like how'd that come about? Yeah, it's been a very long journey and I'm going to give you a, a, a long answer that's kind of everywhere. But I've I've Do it. always been uh, anxious. I've always been a little bit high strung. I have not wanted to be that. And I've I've been told by like medical professionals and family members and strangers that I should relax more. So like like that that has been like uh, <laughs> doctors a, a, like hey man yeah, you got to chill a, out a piece man. of advice no there there's uh, <laughs> this is the thing that I I I know that I've talked about in stand up at one of your shows when you when you used to do rap comedy variety shows mm -hmm. you you very generously let me tell this story. And it was uh, a, uh, a story about the time I, I started to lose vision in my right eye. I was going blind in one eye in, I think, like 2012, 2013, something like that. And I uh, didn't know what was going on with it. I My optometrist didn't know. And then I went to an ophthalmologist and they didn't know. And then I went to a retinal specialist and they figured it out. And it was central serous retinopathy, which is... Uh, where fluid builds up in your eye and pushes your lens away from your fucking eyeball. And it causes <laughs> blurry vision and, like, sensitivity to light and makes it very hard to, like, interact with the world. And uh, after, again, going through 
three doctors, four including my primary care physician at the time, uh, and finally finding out what this is, I was like, great, central serous retinopathy, retinopathy. What? What is this? What do I do? And I'm like, yeah. well, it's 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 very common in people in high stress jobs. It's very it's most common in uh, fighter pilots and very uh, important like Wall Street business people. Are you either of those things? And I was like, no, I am an internet comedian. But you should see how but like many I'm, like I'm, I write so hard, I take so it very fast. seriously. <laughs> and I was like, "Doctor, what is what is the what should I do to 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 fix this stress induced blindness? Do I get like, surgery?" Well, I was gonna say, "I was gonna say, get an easy bullshit job," but yeah. you're way ahead of me. <laughs> like, stop flying planes. Uh, and he was just like, "Just, just relax. Just, just like." If it gets really bad, there's a surgery we recommend, but in in the short term, uh, there's not really a thing. It's just be less stressed, like take stress away from you. And I'm like, fucking thanks a lot, doc. Like every, everyone in the world, I felt like has been telling me to be less stressed. And this is the first time it was like a medical uh, issue yeah. where it was like, be less stressed or you will go blind. So I well, or I'll stab you in the eyeball. It right. sounds like, or cut your eyeball <laughs> yeah. open. <laughs> so I did uh, what I, th I, th I think any reasonable person would do, and was just like very idly googling around. Uh, how do I be less stressed? What do I what do I do to remove stress from my life? And uh, meditation came up, and this was the f the first time that I went to like a guided meditation seminar in 2013 whatever year, year this was with a mm -hmm. mutual friend of ours uh alex simone who used to do mm. um makeup for us uh yeah, at, yeah. at cracked projects she she was she was a, a, a fantastically talented person who was also uh the opposite end of the spectrum from me as uh, uh, on the subject of like spiritual hookie bookie wellness stuff <laughs> If I if I'm I'm a strange robot and she is looking at horoscopes every day and we we spent a lot of time together on set and at one point she was like I think the thing you need is meditation I would like you to come with me to this guided meditation seminar at this temple and I think it would be good for you and uh, I've learned everything that you've said that you've seen that you want and that 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 is my recommendation we will go together and uh i was not ready for meditation at the time but i thought at the time if i just go to this thing and put up with her stupid <laughs> bullshit maybe we can make uh -huh. out or something uh which yeah, we, which, sure. which, which which we did not i was i was just like let me let me let me like go to this dumb thing and maybe she will like me if i do that uh a nothing romantic happened between us and B I gained nothing from this seminar because again I wasn't ready for it at the time I was I was I was in my 20s I was young and I was uh grouchy and half blind and so a very <laughs> kind and peaceful man saying you should let go of your anger you should let go of your stress was not the thing that I wanted to hear because yeah. when when you're when you're I don't, I don't mean to project but when you're younger, when you're in your, your, your twenties, you, you don't want to hear those things. You, you, like, I, I certainly felt like, like my anger or my ambition, these were the things that were making me successful professionally and like giving me the things that I wanted to, to get. And so this first foray into meditation did absolutely nothing for me. I sat there in this seminar in a, in a, a crowd of well-meaning mm -hmm. people with my eyes closed, spending the entire time thinking, this is bullshit, this is bullshit, this is bullshit, this is bullshit. <laughs> that could be your mantra, though, if yes, you fall yeah. into that. <laughs> uh, also very striking, I, man, it's just interesting to me that I think in your 20s it's er easier to see those things as um, leading to something. And yeah. they feel like story threads that will one day uh, build to some kind of resolution or expectation of life going away. It's going to go or a climactic thing. And um, there are things in life that feel like resolutions or climaxes, but they're never the ones that you bet were going to happen or thought would happen at a particular time. 
almost ever. And I feel like uh, in my 20s, at least, I was much more unwilling to. I was very invested in the, the idea that my life was on track because of actions that I took and that there's cause and effect and my anger. Um, I'm angry because something pissed me off and that will only resolve when I beat the thing and save the world. And like, like ultimately that will yield to a conclusion. And now approaching 40, I'm much more willing to go, no, no, yeah, I'll, I'll never figure that out. I may as well just like relax about it. <laughs> yeah, certainly. <laughs> Gotta let it go. The, 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 it's like learned helplessness in the face of life. Yeah, and you just and you 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 realize how uh, unpleasant it feels to 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 be angry and 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 to to feel like you have a, a chip on your shoulder to feel slighted. It's just it's and as you get older, because we're 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 both getting closer to forty, you you mm-hmm. you think about like how much of my time do I want to spend being angry or feeling like I'm right about something versus how much of my time do I want to spend being happy and like. At, at peace yeah. and calm. Um, but I wasn't there yet. Or even just thinking <laughs> thoughts all the time. Yeah. Like for me, where I came at it is uh, an inability to almost in an ADD way or uh, intrusive looping thought. Like I, and I have another episode lined up about this, um, but I can't ever stop thinking. Like there's never yeah. a gap in my internal monologue to the point that it is like obnoxious yeah. and became a drag. So it doesn't, whether it's angry or happy or sad, I just wanted like more space. Like, yeah. shut up for a second. Yeah. Um, but so, so how'd you actually get into yeah, it? Yeah. So, it, so it had been. I, I I bring all that stuff up, the eye stuff and the the me trying to hit on Alex stuff, uh, up to to say that it's been in my head. Meditation has been recommended to me and in my head since 2012 or 2013, and it wasn't till until I was. A couple years into my current job at Last Week Tonight, I'd moved back to the East Coast and was living in New York and like career things were going very well. I was I was very satisfied at work. I felt uh, respected and I felt like my talents were being, my talents such as they are, were being used very well. And uh, I was expected to perform at a high level and that that is very rewarding for me as a professional. I was closer to my family uh, physically and emotionally because I'd moved back here. Uh, but I was still like, there was something that was slightly off in me and I was, was going to church. I'm a, I'm a regular church goer and I was, I did, I do volunteer work and I was doing that, but it was still like, I was missing some kind of thing. There were, there was some, I was, I, I still felt this, like this chip on my shoulder. I was like, let me give meditation an honest try the other thing the other reason that i was getting into it is that uh john mulaney and jerry seinfeld swear by transcendental meditation as Mm. like a regular practice that they do and i was apart from like thinking of myself as as a spiritual person in the world existing trying to to have a better connection to to life and time i was also thinking like these are two of the masters what are they doing? Let me learn all of their secrets so I can, because I- Gary Shanley yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I want to do that too. And uh, TM, as it's 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 commonly known, is, is like, I don't know, possibly a weird cult of meditation that I've, I've hitched myself to. But I, I picked it because it was the one that Mulaney and Seinfeld and Shanling picked. And another thing, this is, this is, revelatory about me is is that uh you you pay to sign up for courses you pay a a a fee based on it's like relative to your income you you just sign Mm. up and 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 you and you pay like if you're making 40 grand a year you pay x if you're making 80 grand a year you pay x plus more etc etc and you what you're paying for is a one-on-one session with a coach who is going to give you your meditation mantra which I'm not allowed to tell you or not allowed to tell anyone. It's just like a thing. And then I have a private ceremony uh, where, where like you, you bring fruit and, and like you bring like gifts to your, your sensei, your master or whatever. And Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's like a whole like ceremony to it. It's just, it's just the two of you, but it's still like a, like a, a, a big to do. It's, it's all of this, all of this is to say it's more than just like, Googling how to meditate and getting an answer. You have to like yeah. show up and do a thing. 
And then after our one-on-one -on -one, uh, seminar, I had like four or five follow-up Zoom seminars with other people who were learning to meditate for the first time. And uh, I bring this up to say that the, the, re the real reason that I think meditation stuck with me this time was because I paid for it because there was a, a sunk cost. It wasn't just like <laughs> yeah, me sure. Googling or reading a book about it. It was like, well, no, I, I, I spent money. So like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to like really give this a shot and yeah. giving this a shot means that seminar and the follow-up classes and then meditating twice a day, every day for 20 minutes each time, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at night. And, uh, again, I don't mean to, to project, but but if if your listeners are anything like me, the idea of adding a new daily task sounds impossible. Yeah, even if I'm oh, not yeah, like that was hard at the start. A very sure. busy person, or like like I I can't say I have a meeting every five or ten minutes or anything like that. But the idea of adding forty minutes to my day consistently every day that was was like no, I, there's there's not an ounce of fat in my day. I can't lose anything from anywhere. But the fact that I had paid for it I was like, well, no, I'm I'm not gonna, I'm not an idiot. I'm not gonna, I'm I, I I won't have wasted money. So let me like do this. If if I decide that meditation is wrong and it's bullshit, let me like decide that from a p place of knowledge and having like really given this a college try versus just like not doing it. So I did it, and it's it's very hard at the beginning. It's very hard to just be like, all right, here's. 20 minutes in the morning where I'm I'm not starting my day and I'm just sitting here and I'm repeating my mantra for 20 minutes and then to do that again at the end of the day repeating your mantra there was the the, the first few times all I was thinking about was the stuff that I wasn't getting done instead oh and uh yeah there's a voice that's like what if this isn't doing anything then I'm literally like gonna die someday and they'll tally up the thing and they'll be like you spent 80 hours meditating what a fucking waste of time yeah. <laughs> like that voice is there in the beginning for sure it's a waste of time and buddy waste of money you paid for someone to tell you yeah. to give you a bullshit phrase and tell you to sit still <laughs> and do nothing yeah but um i genuinely love it and it, it's it's become the kind of thing like any of the other daily tasks in my life where it's like, well, yeah, I'm going to meditate every day in the same way that I'm going to, like, I don't make time to eat. It's just like a part mm -hmm. of my day that I do. I don't make time yeah. to, to shower or make my bed. I don't have to like carve out time for that. Meditation eventually became a thing that fell into that same category. I was like, well, no, of course I'm going to meditate. I, 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 the day is not complete if I don't, do this twice daily meditation thing and I can't yeah. uh, you know it's it's hard to really measure how effective a thing is and I know a lot of factors go into my personal progress and growth as a human being I'm, I'm, I'm getting older and, and age changes all of us uh, but no one has ever called me patient in my life until I started meditating. that's That's been like mm -hmm. a new thing that people have uh, ascribed to me is 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 patience. And it's something that I've always wanted to be, but I've never felt particularly patient. But, I, but like meditating has been a helpful step towards yeah. that goal. Interesting. Well, I'm, I'm coming at it from a slightly different angle, which I yeah. think is actually super cool. So... I uh, I also wanted to do this episode now because I'm about a year in. I do five minutes in the morning and 15 minutes uh, like later in the day and midday and then five minutes before bed. And it's not, there's no hokum or whatever. I, I feel bad saying hokum because it might totally be true. I, you know what I mean? Uh, TM may be the way to go. But just for the sake of balance or the fact that there's different flavors, I'm coming at it from the place of uh, telling my therapist that I 
think too much and am very highly strung and anxious a lot of the time. And um, I'm trying all kinds of stuff and I'll try anything. And if it's helpful, I'll incorporate it into my life. And so I just got a meditation app. Again, I want to point out that the sunk fallacy cost super does work and you don't have to spend that much. I'm spending $9.99 a month on this app and that's still enough for me to be like, well, I spent the money. Um, So I really started just trying and taking it seriously. And I will say that, I mean, because they're trying to go for broad appeal, right? Um, They really sterilize the spiritual aspect. They're really coming at it of a, or coming at it from a place of one of the great truths that almost every culture, religious and secular discovers. There's like Eckhart Tolle, the power of now where he pretends he invented it, right? There's Buddhism. There's so many cultures have discovered a really helpful tool in life is to uh, train your mind just like you train your body through repetitive practice to have control over itself and be able to step out of an emotion if you want to, not have to be swept up by it, be able to, to some degree, not 100%, yeah. but um, make your mind rest if, it, if you, it's been going all day and you want to rest, bring your attention out of your mind and into the present moment in the world. Basically, being present is hugely rewarding. And um, as someone who's done psychedelic drugs, I'll also say that it kind of feels the same as that. And I think that's like a pretty powerful statement. Like, I... Uh, I thought for a long time that there was a sense of presence and urgency and beauty about the universe that I only experienced. I thought it ended when you were like childhood, like you aged out of it. I was like, I guess I'll never feel that way again because that's a childhood thing. Um, And I have lived like, you know, I'm ashamed to say like probably 18 years completely in my head. And I started meditating and I have now started to have fleeting moments of being fully present and i swear it's like being on acid you're like whoa the sky is so blue oh my god the light on that tree jesus and like it does there's this experience i think because i have been so unmindful um it's really a rush when you like start to get traction and i'm coming at it just from a place of like this is a biofeedback thing that's good that will make your like life more pleasant and um so far so good i do also say that it's good and people should try it but i want to ask you now some probing questions because i do have questions as someone who's like medium in it um what's like the max amount of stretch of time that you think you've gone being fully present or mindless or not having a thought and truth because the guy or my guy at least always says um now remember you're not trying to squash the thought or make your brain not think um maybe it will rest over time we hope that it may come to rest at times but it's just to observe the thoughts it's just that it's okay that it thinks but you take it and you think it and you let it go and the next one comes and you just observe it and let it go um but that moment of like being in the void and being fully present, I think my max is probably 20 seconds and I feel like really good about that. But I was expecting to be present all the t- like all day, like, you know, or like for hours at a time. How are you doing on that? I'm doing OK on that. I would say it's it's uh, minutes, not seconds for me, certainly. But also yeah. like when I was uh, learning about this and talking to. Uh, one of my teachers in a seminar and he was talking about he, he'd been doing this forever and he was talking about how the goal of TM is to eventually like like there's a reason transcend is in that you 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 want to like like fully reach a new level where you're seeing things differently and experiencing colors differently experiencing sounds differently and I was like hey question what uh what do you mean? What is that like? And he was like, "Oh, I haven't is done it, it like yet. Magic? I, I have, I have not done yeah. it yet. I have not reached that. I've been doing this for twenty years, and I have not gotten there yet." I'm like, okay, so I, I, I understand. But I'm also, I'm not, um, I'm not engaging with meditation to reach a sort of psychedelic plane or anything like that. I'm, I'm engaging with it as a, as a way to just like check in with my brain and my body, and, and, you know, it's like you don't need to take any class to understand why it would be good for 
anyone and everyone to like just fucking sit quietly for 40 minutes a day and and check in with yourself I guess I feel like you do need some cajoling to be like, I definitely do not value or did not value that because, uh, yeah. And I would say the main takeaway I think is regulation and self regulate or especially in my case, cause I do have mood swings and stuff like that. And, um, and I think it's helping, like, I think yeah. it's a, a good positive factor, but so yes, the goal is not to experience a psychedelic trippiness, but, um, I do think people would be surprised how much like the mind body connection, how strong it becomes. Cause I, there are things I didn't expect that are happening that are kind of woo woo and trippy. Like, uh, um, I do, I sometimes do feel like when I'm doing like a body scan, it really feels like an electrical current is like running from the top of my body to the bottom in a tingly, very concrete physical way that I did not expect the visualization to get to the point of feeling like that. Um, so there's like a weird, there's some, there's something that unfolds. It, I mean, I'm someone who's really not, it hasn't been in touch with their body. You are more because you've historically like worked out a lot with the meditation. I'm starting to become more physically fit and be in touch with my body. Um, so I'd love for you to speak to this, but I'll just say, uh, realizing how connected my mind and body are and how intimately like that is definitely unfolded for me that. If my body feels shitty, it affects my mental state and my mental state. And to the point where I now believe, you know, you hear about monks who can think and slow their heart rate or raise it yeah. or emit heat or not. And I believe it now. I totally believe that with practice, like I can start to see the beginnings of what they mean by that or how you would get to that place. Man, I was so angry when I uh, was talking to my teacher about meditation and I was like, I'm... I. I'm an avid runner. I run every single day. And I like to think of <laughs> running said, as a go form of, that. <laughs> of meditation. Because mm. uh, I really, you know, what, sometimes I'm listening to music. Sometimes I'm listening to absolutely nothing. And it's just like running is, is it, in my caveman brain, a very meditative act. You can disassociate and just sort of like be and exist and, and let a lot of troubles go away and I do a lot of my best thinking and writing while I'm running and a lot of it is just like one step two step one step two step just like going forward just breathing just doing it and I was like this is like technically kind of meditation and my teacher was like yeah no it's not it doesn't count <laughs> it doesn't count to your for towards your 40 minutes that you need to do every day and I'm like well fuck this I was so annoyed that it didn't count because I'm, I'm that's I'm, very different than the app. The app is like, be gentle with yourself. If you only did 30 seconds today, that's all right. Just I'm, come back tomorrow. I'm such a, a to do list person. I have my my uh -huh. my daily, weekly, monthly, yearly to do list that I, I check things off. And I'm I'm always looking for ways to check things off my to do list and meditation. Uh, my teacher was very firm with me. He was like, no, it's it's. It's 20 minutes in the morning and it's 20 minutes in the evening or it doesn't count. And you can, <laughs> and I was like, well, what if I'm doing the 20 minutes in the evening and it's not working? What if I get antsy and I want to stop and I know that I could use my time better? I could use that time to clean or like get the rest of my night going. And she's like, you can do that, but it doesn't count. And she, she, uh, linked it to running where she was like, you want to mm -hmm. run every day. Uh, you don't have to. You can, in the middle of a run, bail if you want. That's fine. You can do that. But who are you running for? You're, 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 you're running for you. You're running because you want to. And so if, you, if your plan is to run three miles and you stop at one and go home, you didn't run three miles. That's how you need to think about meditation too. And it was very frustrating yeah. but like incredibly helpful for me and then you're like does it matter if it doesn't count do i lose something and they're yeah. like you tell me yeah you know <laughs> like that's matter it's however much you want your life to improve or not bro yeah. like yeah it's on you yeah that's the other frustrating thing about about meditation is that like i have access to these teachers whenever i want to reach out to them but it's not like going to the dentist where i come back in six months and i'm like Look at how well I've been doing. They don't care. They're not keeping track of it. It's still for yeah. me, this thing that I'm doing. 
I would have asked your teacher, and I wonder if you have ever asked, um, so you haven't reached transcendence, but have you met anyone or ha- who has slash, do you firmly believe that it, ex- like you must believe it, it exists, it's tangible, yeah. right? Or you wouldn't devote your life to this? Has that conversation happened? That hasn't happened, but I, I a different okay. teacher that I had, um, the, the one that was doing like the, the Zoom group meditation conversations with me, uh, at one point he told a story he said that uh, when he was in college, he was in a fraternity. Uh, he lived at the frat house, and the house had a live-in cook who made all of their meals every day. Which, like, right off the bat, unrelatable. This is this is we had different college <laughs> yeah, experiences, yeah, right? Um, and uh, he talked about how he didn't like the cook. Something about the cook rubbed him the wrong way. He. Uh, would pass him every day on his way out of the house and always tried to ignore him. Then he started getting into meditation and one day he decided to smile at the cook and say hi and did that every day and eventually they started having conversations and getting to know each other and they became friends. Uh, It's a good story. It seems like a story that on balance has increased the amount of happy people and happy interactions in the world and he went on Mm -hmm. to tell a bunch of other stories about his meditation journey and then like 20 minutes after this story happened when he opened it up for questions i raised my hand and i was like what was it about the cook that you didn't like and he was like right. well, what yeah. and i said that cook from earlier the one you didn't like what was it about him and he was like oh, i don't know i don't remember now it's just just something about him the point was i didn't need to be angry with him the point was meditation helped me not be angry and i was like no that is not the point the point that's not the point if you were right, if you were angry about him <laughs> right, right, right. for like a good reason, because this was, I, I learned in this conversation was like a, a big resistance, resistance point for me from meditation where, where I was like, I don't want, I, I, I know that I need to, to calm down. I want to be less anxious. I want to be, uh, I don't want to be thought of as an angry person or or, or a grouch or a grump. Uh, but I also don't want to change who I am or what I am. And uh, part of, at the, at the time, certainly what I thought who I am meant involved this anger. It involved this chip on my shoulder. Accountability. That, that, that motivated or, yeah. me certainly creatively and, and, and professionally like that, like this, 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 this feeling of being left behind that that motivated all of my ambition professionally my entire life and i didn't i was so worried with that i would meditate and it would make my life better and make me happier and make me calmer but also like take away this anger that i thought was very important to me mm-hmm. and so i was i was that was my big question not like I didn't ask my teachers if they transcended or if they knew anyone that transcended, but it was very important to me to find out, like, do your, do your friends and family think you changed? Do you, do you, do you, do, do people say you're different now? And, uh, do you, do you miss the old thing that, that you, that you might've had? Uh, mm-hmm. and, Across the board, they were, they, they, you know, they said the answers that you expect them to say. They were like, yeah, they, yeah. they've noticed a difference and it's good. And I was like, yeah, but what if, what if the thing it's, I secretly believe is true? Yeah. What if, what if the anger that, uh, has been, I think the like burning coal at the, the heart of every professional success I've ever experienced. Yeah. What if that goes away? And then what? And then what happens to me? Yeah. It's wildly hilarious and unfair that um, the human brain seems unable to, or at least mine, and I know it will resonate with a lot of people, uh, uh, you cannot accept, like, more should be more, not less is more. Or, like, surely my life will be richer, I, I thought, if uh, I succeed and like 
have money and accomplishments and do all these cool things and go on lots of adventures and I'm like a VIP and achieve and like get and for me it's even like and try all the drugs and do all the things go on every roller coaster mm-hmm. and uh, then I you know go to AA and hear people go no nah, my life's way better now that I don't drink and I didn't believe them and then I went through AA and I stopped drinking and now I believe them but I still won't believe it about the next thing and the next yeah. thing and the next thing. And it's so funny that ultimately, like, I find these people who I really admire because their vibe is so strong and I find out what their deal is. And it's that they've gotten to a point of um, just sort of flowing and letting go of everything. And I'm like, that still seems like bullshit to me. I can't let go of everything, yeah. even though every time I've ever let go of something, I've always ultimately been glad. So like the recent one is uh, coffee. I now don't do any caffeine. Ugh. And every time I go through this process on the one side, I think, but my life will be so sterile and impoverished and hollow without this thing. And then on the other side, I go, I feel much better now. <laughs> and it's like, why don't I just skip to the chase and be like straight edge and meditate? And it's like, I don't know. I just don't want to. It seems like nerdy. or like, yeah. it, you know, I don't know. It's so hard to let go of treats. And then and then I realize I don't need them. It like is. Every time I let go of them. And, and thinking about my... Uh, my past anger as a treat like I like revisiting these thoughts in this conversation right now is is a gift and and thank you for letting me do it but I Mm. I, it makes me want to reach back at uh, angry younger Daniel and 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 hold his hand because like I'm I'm I remember vividly this this time when I'm when I'm I'm thinking about this teacher and his frat house cook and uh, being an advocate for like hanging on to anger and 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 being young Daniel who was like, no, who's this cook? Who's this guy who pissed you off every day? He he was in your space. He was in your house every morning and he sucked. I'll fucking kill him. What's his address? <laughs> like this, this. And you never like, checked that box on your to do list. Let's get this done. <laughs> this is just like like like, I'm I'm, I'm smiling at and heartbroken for a version of myself who was like, I'm what you're promising me with meditation is mindfulness and uh, creative fulfillment and calm and the kind of peace that will help me not go blind in one eye. That's what you're promising me. And I'm holding on so tightly to this anger that I think is important to my the personality of the my, my, or my something. core yeah. yeah yeah this yeah. this this one thing that i was clinging to and that the 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 i'm 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 very glad that i spent the money uh and that inspired me to keep going with this process because i i am a less mm. angry person now but it's just it's it's heartbreaking to think about me at a time when it was like hey if you go in this door uh you get peace and you get and you get comfort and you get the 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 things that you want but you might have to smile at this chef that for some reason your bones decided he sucks you have to let go of that you have to let go of the you have to part. actually turn the other cheek yeah like, yeah you have to do the thing <laughs> yeah yeah like mm, don't want to do that no don't really instinctively want to do that because what if i'm right what if i'm yeah. right and the chef sucks and yeah, and every teacher that I've had since then has been like, then you know, sucks. yeah, you you might be. Who and cares? Such it is. What is it? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's the whole point. Yeah. Uh, speaking of creative fulfillment, when you are meditating, do you find, or it, or did you find? I don't know if you've passed this point in your practice because minutes at a time is strong, strong numbers. You're putting mm-hmm. up big numbers, but. Uh, do you find that you have incredible creative writing or story or joke ideas while you're meditating as if your brain is trying to like like a dog toy like break you, you know? It's been very I will think of great lines and be like, I'm supposed to not be thinking. Stop it. Yeah, it's been it's been very helpful to me. I'm 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 curious cuz you've, you've always been uh a uh better and more imaginative writer than than I have been. Uh, but that what what I, I feel like I get from meditation 
writing wise is it makes me feel like I am 19 again when I'm writing. I've been for for 11 years at Cracked and now five or six years at, at Last Week Tonight. I've been I've had a very like workman like approach to writing like Cracked. Certainly I had a, a, a weekly column and uh, various deadline centric video writing responsibilities mm-hmm. at Cracked, whether we were doing After Hours or Agents of Cracked or Rom.com or Obsessed with Pop Culture or any of the shows that w- that we made Woo. there was very much like, we need, we have uh, units of content that, that need to be filled and distributed to the world. And now at Last Week Tonight, uh, there there's there's a lot of joy and there's a lot of art in it, but it's also, it's a, it's a weekly show. We need to make this episode of television and we need we we have like a pretty clear rhythm for how the show goes i'm john oliver here's a video clip of something that i'm gonna use to illustrate this point here's a joke after that video clip here's some language here's the next video clip we go through it's all very workmanlike it's all very machine-like and uh process driven and uh that's how i've been writing basically everything since like 2008 was deadline and process driven and the writing that I do that I feel like springs from uh my meditation work is is much freer it's the kind of writing that I was doing when I was 19 years old 18 years old in college as a bartender just like writing notes in my fucking order pad just like writing not thinking yeah. about deadlines not thinking about delivery just just like this is this is this is the thing that popped into my head and I, I I I'm writing that it's it's a part of my writer brain that I tamped down for the last 15 years or so that meditation has has brought out that said I, I can't say like I've written this great screenplay for meditating and it's ready to be sold right now or anything like that it's just a different kind of writing that I'm uh I I didn't allow myself to have access to uh, until yeah. I started really getting into this process. Yeah, it won't be a fully realized thing, but it'll be like a crucial like story point that I've been thinking about for weeks and couldn't figure out. And then it's like, oh, he should punch that guy. Oh, yeah, yeah that perfectly works. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm supposed to be meditating. Um, but yeah, I think that's more my challenge is just the constant, uh, the chattering distraction is my deal. Um, do you, so comparing between i'm so interested now in the different types so i've never meditated with people and in fact that's like the next step for me so i'm sort of going in the reverse order um because my therapist recommended uh take it to the next if it's if you're enjoying it take it to the next level and go to a group and do it a guided one with these people in a room and so i'm gonna ask you what i ask them why or does that make it better or something can't i we're just sitting still i can't do that at home uh, is what do you get out of doing it with the other people around? For I mean, real. Th- this this might be a personal preference. I'm just I've always been like a very community driven person, and and mm. uh, like church volunteer work that scratches the same itch of just like I want to be in a room with these people who are all doing this. We're all committed to like we are we are here because we want to to be better to be more more present to be more thoughtful to be more mindful and i just like the energy that that gives me i mean is is it yeah is it dissimilar from aa if you don't mind me asking in concept no no uh you're absolutely right <laughs> so i guess i'm just uh not connecting the things cuz yeah no being it being in in a big I mean, I was literally at a big church full of other people going through the same. That's one of the most powerful things is you realize you're not alone. But that's more, I don't know. I guess I just thought it was different because AA, you're coming at a place of, I have a, I have a problem that most alcoholics come from a place of that I feel shame about. It feels like a weakness 
um, blah, blah, blah. And then you shuffle in and you're like, oh, wait, there's like 100 people here with the exact same problem. That is a powerful way, to, a disconfirming stance or a way to know. I'm not alone. Uh, some of these people might be assholes, but surely amongst like the 800, like some of them are probably fairly similar to me and my situation and they have the same shit going on. So like humans, this happens to humans and humans get over it. And it helps you have perspective and normalize and realize that it's possible for you too. I guess with meditation, because it's something that you're going in thinking, I'm already fine or like I'm normal. I'm trying to go better than that, or I'm trying to like <laughs> aspirationally, aspirationally better my situation. Um, but that makes a lot of sense, right? Because, uh, well, d oh yeah, I know. Because a quick question, like you've run with, you like to run with a group. It doesn't always work out because of building politics or timing or whatever. Correct. But, um, but yeah, yeah, you get energy from doing stuff with a group where we're all doing it together. I do sometimes, and I don't sometimes. I. Ha you, uh, but you know, you have legendary social anxiety. How do you square that with the wanting to be part of a group thing? Uh, because that's where I get hung up. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's it's just about knowing that I'm not alone in this thing, and and uh, I get, I get very jazzed by like, uh, incredibly superficial differences. I think the 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 because. I started to get into meditation during COVID. So a lot of our stuff was on zoom and like seeing mm. my zoom group for the first time. These are people who we all just decided we are going to start TM right now in November of whatever year that was. We're going to start it right now. And we're going to take these nighttime zoom classes. That is the only thing that, that binds us is we randomly picked this particular time in human history and looking at the the faces of all the other people in my zoom group and they were so we're, we're like our, our breakdowns are so different we're not the same age we're not the same race we're not the same anything we're just like this is a group of people across the spectrum because you know there, there there would be something sort of upsetting i think if i looked and it was a bunch of other uh, scruffy, scrawny, white comedy writers like, who are who, who, work a day who are all like, writers, yeah, like yeah, yeah we're, we're all bored and we're trying this new thing. No, it's like it's it's across the map, a whole bunch of different people, and we're all sort of unified. Like like choosing meditation is uh, a, an interesting and important act. It's 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 the the, the kind of person who decides I want to do this thing. I want to go through this dumb, weird ceremony where I, I meet with a master and I give them fruit and then I close my eyes and they give me a mantra in a language I don't know. And I'm not allowed to repeat my mantra, but I just like sit here and do it all in the pursuit of I want to be calmer. I want to be less angry. I want to be happier. I want to be better. The kind of person who is drawn to that is very interesting to me. And and is is company that I want to keep. As much as I struggle with with social anxiety stuff, when I'm among these people, I feel like uh, sometimes I feel like I'm 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 an imposter and I and I I, I don't belong there. Uh, when I'm feeling good, I feel like yes, I found my people. But when I'm feeling bad, I feel like I found the people that I want to be like and be around, and that gives me a nice little uh, boost to be better. Yeah. That is nice. I have a thing where, well, I no, that's great. I find it so rewarding to talk to you because we have, like, we have nothing but love and goodwill for each other. But I do think we uh, plug into things in different ways, which makes it more interesting to talk to you. But I'm like, and I, I think I'm going to do it. I'll do it. And that's a great endorsement. And that makes sense. And I should open myself to that. Um, but the angry Daniel, my version of that, I think is... Um, I'm a consummate performer and I mean even in my life or like I th I have the problem of viewing everything as transactional and worrying about pleasing people to the point that they'll like be cool with me. Like my greatest deepest fear is always to fuck up in front of someone, disappoint someone or get in trouble and people are the thing in front of whom I do that. <laughs> so like <laughs> I limit my risk of disappointing anyone by I'm super into the pandemic and how we never see anyone. I am like thriving under that environment. Man. And yet I'm a human. So 
there are still times where I'm like, no, I'm lonely. There's a flip side of the coin and it comes around. So uh, yeah, that's, thank you. That, that will encourage me to like weave some real, and you know, for all I know, and I really believe this is possible, a hundred years from now, science will be like, Oh no, yeah, there's a benefit there because your brain waves all affect each other or like you don't realize but the pheromones of everyone doing the same thing is like I believe in that stuff. You say you get energy from it and I bet there's a scientific basis for that that we don't know about. Yeah. Uh, Because everyone seems to report that. Um, Okay. Well, I'm looking at the clock. So last leg of the conversation, but uh, I wanted to compare visualizations because... Mine is super visualization driven. Do you guys even do visualizations? Or does that, is visualization a, do I need to explain it? I mean, I know you know what the word means, but. Uh, I would love for you to explain it. Okay, so like I have found these incredibly useful when it's the right one. Um, So you'll do a body scan from top to bottom just to sort of get in touch with your body. I understand that's fairly common. But, um, for example, one that I always used to do, uh, because a lot of meditation involves focusing on the breath, um, would I would imagine like breathing in like golden light that sort of suffuses my body and cures like a black smoke that's inside me. And I did that for a long time and I made that one up myself. And it, it, and then I started doing meditation and very interestingly, uh, in one of the sessions, they started doing a, a regular visualization that was exact, op, exactly the opposite of that. Um, you imagine yourself as a source of infinite glowing radiant light and you inhale black smoke, but the light like makes it like nothing can withstand the light and then you radiate energy. Um, so things like that or like... Uh, to uh, combat high stress or panic attacks, they'll do one where you're supposed to imagine that you're hollow and honey is dripping in through the top of your head and it fills up your toes and then your feet and then wow. your, and everything it touches slowly dissolves and like relaxes and relaxes. So there's all these very specific, when you get a thought, you're supposed to imagine a feather falling on a balloon and the balloon getting pushed out of the way gently. Wow. None of this. No, it seems like you're not doing any of this. No, shit. we don't do any of that. Any of that at all. <laughs> all right. We we, uh, okay. we just like you you sit and you repeat your mantra in your head for 20 minutes. I've been saying 20 minutes twice a day. Uh, anyone who listens listens to this who is a, a TM person has been shrieking because it's actually technically supposed to be 23 minutes twice a day. But I oh but, it's. But based on that Jim Carrey movie, yeah, so the, the the yes, yes, <laughs> number twenty three <laughs> is about TM. Uh, it's like three minutes that at the end of it, you're supposed to like slowly come out of your meditation, so you don't uh, just like as soon as twenty minutes hit, you don't like jerk up. You like oh, I was going to ask like, you that. Yeah. We do a cool down too. I was like, yeah. do you guys do a cool down? Yeah, I'm supposed to do a cool down, and I it's the the only part of the process that I don't respect or do at all because it seems like uh fuck that noise uh, um, oh you don't go 17 and three you go 20 and then you're like back to business yeah yeah i do, I do 20 <laughs> like uh i've meditated excellently again time, yeah. time time to do the stuff that i wanted to do um but you you do your meditation and you really just uh close your eyes and say your mantra over and over again the the whole point of meditation the way that we do it is it's supposed to be easy. You're not supposed to beat yourself over the head about it. You're not supposed to like get nervous if yeah. you if you if your mind wanders or you hear a siren in the background and it distracts you from saying your mantra. It's fine. Find your mantra again. Return to your mantra. Return to your breathing. It's easy. This is supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be relaxing. It's not supposed to be a thing that you can get wrong necessarily. Because if the part of your brain's engaged that's that's even judging, oh, you did well, oh, that one was wrong, that's thinking. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it's this meta thing you're trapped in. You're supposed to drop all of it. Just drop it. Just yeah. drop it all. <laughs> even if you come up with like a brilliant realization in the middle of your meditating, it's like, that's fine. You, you came up with a great invention that's going to cure world hunger. It's not your mantra, though, is it? Pick up that mantra again, baby. Yeah. Get yeah. back to it. What's our purpose here? Yeah, I uh, 
asked a meditation like guru type person I had the chance to speak to about that because I said I have great story ideas and then I'm too tempted because I'll do that thing where you got to keep re-upping the neuron or you'll forget it, right? It's like every 30 seconds you go, and when I'm done meditating, I got to remember to write down that idea. Oh, I shouldn't be thinking that. And then 30 seconds and you think the same thing. Um, (laughs) And they were like, well, what if you opened yourself to the idea that uh, you know, there's lots of people and lots of ideas and they're all just bouncing around and you'll forget millions of ideas before yeah. you die. So like you could forget that one. Yeah. I'm you, like, but you, what if I said the same thing? What if someone thinks of the cure for cancer? And they're like, <laughs> then they'll probably uh, remember it again later. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? You're probably right. If it came to them once, it probably would. Fair enough. <laughs> They're like, then it's on the verge of coming to them, right? It's in their neuronal. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So it's just all about, I, it's frustrating when you meet the people who are good at it because everything, their answer is like, just relax about that. And you're yeah. like, I know, but <laughs> I have follow-up questions. And they're like, the answer to every follow-up question is just relax about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But they're and right. And now it doesn't. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, they're right. They're right. And it and everything you try to prove them wrong, you go like, but if we didn't think, we wouldn't build buildings. If I couldn't plan, I would miss my son's birthday. And yeah. they're like, yeah, we're not saying that. Your brain can turn on and off just right now for twenty minutes. <laughs> just yeah. do this. Just let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Which yeah. is let it go is the most helpful advice I've ever received in my life and it drives me fucking crazy and I'm so mad about it all the time. It's the hardest thing to do in the universe. That was the entire sermon of the guided meditation ceremony that I went to with Alex which is the guy just told several stories and at the end of every story of like this guy was stressed because his his daughter's going to college and he doesn't know he's going to pay for college let it go. This this woman was stressed because she's up for a promotion and she doesn't know if she's going to get it. Let it go. And I'm like, no, no, you can't. Yeah. 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 And I think that's important to say is you don't want to cheapen the, and I don't think people mean this when they say it, but just for my like people, you know, to my homies out there with severe mood disorders, um, like growing up, one of the, the things I hated most was when my dad would say, because my mom suffered with depression, um, your mom just likes to be unhappy or like she should just yeah. snap out of it. And I don't want to conflate it with, it's not easy to let it go. You spend no. your life learning to let yeah. it go. And um, if you're sad for reasons, no one can tell you like, just snap out of it. Um, yes. But and it's I'm, like a... I'm no, also, I know you're not saying I'm that I'm also either, ac- but. acutely aware, separate from that, that like... Yeah. We live in a, a capitalist society and all of these things are easier for like, yeah, tell Bank of America to let it go. Tell my student <laughs> right, loans exactly. to let it go also. <laughs> like yeah. then then I will find some peace if we could just like if if we're all really chill, we just all need to decide that <laughs> we're just, all going to let it go. No, you relax. <laughs> no, you fucking relax. I'll relax when you're relaxed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but totally, um, I, I think mostly what we're saying and I came in not knowing where I'd land, but I'm, I'm heartened and I, I'm not that I was going to quit meditating. I am going to keep at it, yes. but I do want to say that it sometimes feels like you're not getting anywhere. It sometimes feels like a setback or whatever, but I've been taking singing lessons for six months now <gasps> and something I thought would never happen is happening, which is like, I sound notably better when I sing and I started working out and wouldn't you know it, I lost weight and <laughs> meditation is also a tangible thing and it turns out it has an impact. There are things you can do over and over and over and you're just wasting your time. But I don't think meditation is one of them. Hell yeah. Isn't yeah. that just the worst? Uh, it's, oh, especially <laughs> right when you start. It's so yeah. boring. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten way, way more used to it. It, Yeah. Yeah, it takes getting used to. Um, all right. Well, that feels like a great place to let it go. Uh, it's a It's a lifetime of practice that keeps unfolding. So obviously we could talk forever. Also, we're just the kings of banter. We we give good banter. So uh, at the risk of the episode going too, too long, I'm going to call it there. Daniel, thank you so much. Really lovely to get to catch up with you uh, in this organized, focused, podcasty way. Um, all right. That's the pit this time. There was no short story at the beginning. 
You're welcome. Short and sweet, we're out. This has been a Small Beans endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The Beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the Small Beans grow into huge, giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you!